going by junior John Petty Jr. and freshman Jason Sassacrum. Uh, and head coach Nate Elvis. We'll go ahead and get uh, Coach Elvis to make an opening statement, and we'll open it up to some questions for the student athletes first. Coach? Yeah, I, you know, big win. Huge. We needed that one. Needed to get to two and two uh, going into North Carolina in a bad way. So I thought our guy, you know, we challenged our guys to not let offensive mistakes, adversity on the offensive and effect effort on defense. Thought we did a really good job of that. Thought our defensive effort was pretty high level for about 38 minutes outside of those first two minutes of the second half. So the um, seems like every time I come in here, I got to address the technical issue. I'll. Uh, <laughs> I thought the kid traveled, and then I thought he fouled uh, him when he handed it off. I let the ref know, and he didn't appreciate it. So after they warned me, I probably should have just shut up. So that's on me. It's not probably not the wisest thing to give away two free points in a tight game like that. Um, other thing that probably come up, I can just save you guys your questions. Beatles in a cast right now. He's got, I guess it's somewhere like a deep bone bruise in his hand. I don't know if you guys remember in the Rhode Island game, he got a tough offensive rebound and came, came down on his hand completely different than the wrist, so he's going to cast it. We're going to take it off Monday, reevaluate it with the uh, with the uh, hand expert, whatever. So this is a hand, not a wrist, but you know, it'd be, it'd be nice to get him back with a uh, healthy wrist so he can make some shots for us. But uh, really pleased with almost everybody's effort on the defense fan. I thought I thought both these guys were really locked into defense, and we've said that when you really just get locked into defense when you're skilled offensive player and just play instinctual, the shots are going to drop. So John, super, super proud of the fact that I, you held Mount scoreless in the second half. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all you want to talk about after the game. So when he's thinking about defense, his shots are going to drop. And they did tonight. It's good to get him back making shots like, like he's, you know, like he does at a high level. Shaq came in. I thought his defense is much improved over these first four games, and, and he's making shots. So. That's what we've been challenging our guys to do. I thought they answered the bell pretty well. For um, for both players, Jaden and John, um, coach said he doesn't need to get the technicals, but y'all did go on a 26, 20 to six run right after the technical. Did it fire you up in any way? Did it get the crowd into it? How, how did y'all sort of respond when that happened? Um, Basically, when he got the technical, we seen that they was um, they were starting to push for a little run. So you know, we came together. You know, he's all he's big on leadership. You know, he wanted us to coach each other out there on the court. So we all came together. You know, said let's lock in and let let's close it out. So that's what we did. Yeah, I mean, I can piggyback off of that. Once we seen coach get the tech, we just kind of came and just bought in as a team and said that we need to we need to step it up and go on the run because they were starting to get momentum after that tech. So we just picked it up and kept playing. Both players, you know, this is the fourth straight game this season that y'all have controlled the boards, 40-plus rebounds. Just, uh, But it's being spread around. It's not like, you know, Javian or anybody else is kind of dominating. So what's working on the, the defensive rebounding and just overall on the boards right now? You know, uh, all the time in practice, I mean, at least two to three times, we always do a boxing out drill. Um, as for both of us, offense and defense, you know, he likes to crash on the offensive end. He's also want us to box out, and we all – it takes five to rebound. So, I mean, he put an emphasis on them, and we try to try our best to capitalize them in each game. And and so far, that's what we've been doing. Yeah, we have huge emphasis on rebounding. So, to have the rebound spread out across the board is big for us. And seeing that we have guys crashing really helps our offense in the flow. Uh, for first for John, you really seemed like you were in a good rhythm tonight from the start. Your shot looked really good. I know you haven't been shooting the way you want to. What's been the key? What was the key to getting you going tonight against this uh, group? You know, me and Coach talked, um, and he know I can shoot just as well as I know I can shoot. So he told me it's gonna take for me to get in the gym and put extra extra shots up. Um, I shoot at the practice sometimes, but he told me you have to do the extra stuff, extra extra stuff sometimes. So each day um, leading up to this game, I've been putting extra, extra shots. So my confidence level in the game was just through the roof. And I just felt like every shot I took was going to fall. And then for you, Shaq, I mean, you uh, didn't start tonight, but you got into a rhythm quickly. How, what was the key for you to get going so, so uh, fast off the bench? Um, just doing things to help my team win, um, locking in on defense and 
if I was to miss my first shot or not, just knowing I'd go down on the defensive end and help my teammates, and that's eventually going to help my shot fall. Any other questions for Sam? We have one here on the line. Be the last one. For Jaden, coming off a season low against Rhode Island in points, how did it feel tonight with the tw leading the team in points? Um, it felt good. Uh, my teammates were finding me and every and, and me trying to get to my spot. So just getting in our flow and just finding the right, finding the open spots to get my shot up felt good. One, I, I've got two, one big point and I guess one small point. Um, first, about Shackelford, um, just talk about him carrying you through the first half. How, how did he carry you, particularly in the first half when you, you really needed I mean, the someone one to thing, do it? <clears throat> go ahead, you want to ask the no, second one? Okay. No, the, one the one thing with Jaden is you can really coach him hard on defense and be all over him, and he's never going to lose his confidence on offense which is sometimes difficult for a freshman to kind of differentiate. You know, he's got a lot of built-in confidence just from all the time and the hours that he's spent in the gym on his own. I mean, he, him and Kyra are two of the biggest gym rats we've got. You know, Javian's in there a lot too. But I think, you know, we've been all over him about his defense. Uh, you know, he gave up way too many blow-bys in that pen loss. And even Rhode Island, I, you know, I think he's been really concentrated on getting better so we've just been all over him on that, but he's not going to lose his confidence on offense. I told him that too. I said, Jaden, like, we're going to coach you hard because you're that good and we need you to play heavy minutes for us this year. But we can't win if you don't get a lot better on defense. So we've been all over him on D and just said, focus on defense. You're a pretty instinctual player on offense. Like, when it comes, like, knock shots down. And it was, <laughs> it was a big shot she hit for us when he came in off the bench. We needed some scoring at that time, and he gave us a big lift there. And, um, People tend to notice more when you don't shoot your free throws well, but after the last media timeout, I think you made 11 in a row. We missed the missed 12, but you were 11 out of 12 down the stretch, the last three and a half minutes. Um, is that something y'all have worked on, seen improvement in? You know what? I, we we kind of shoot pressure free throws with a diff different kind of way we run practice. To be honest with you, over – the last couple of weeks, we haven't done anything different. We just encourage our guys to get in, get 100, 200 up on their own outside of practice. I was really encouraged to see Kyra go six for six, and you know those are big free throws to keep the lead going when we needed it. So I think he's another kid that just with all his work on his own in the gym, he's a real confident kid on the offensive end. So missing those two against Penn hasn't shook him at all. He's come right back in, bounced back, which shows a Shows a lot about him, to be honest with you. I mean, a lot of kids that would shake a little bit, they'd turn it into a head game. It hasn't been the case with him at all. He just steps up and makes them. So between him and Shaq, you know, I, I thought they made big ones late. So I, I was happy. It was good. You know, 20 out of 27 is a pretty solid night at the free throw line. Yeah, Nate, you, I asked the players this, but the, right the, the rebounding just – Really across the board, but you know a lot from the guards as well. Obviously, Kyra has another big game. You know, uh, I think he even led the team. And then just overall, I mean, Shaq, Petty, if you consider him, you know, guard wing, whatever. Just what's it? What's working that you're able to kind of get that from that position? Uh, you know, one kind of like they said, we do stress it a lot, I and mean, we get all over them. We have a rebounding edit after every single game. We're going to show them what they. Now we missed a bunch of checkouts there late in the second half that almost let them back in the game. So we've got an issue with it. So we got to clean that up, and we will be all over that on our video edit tomorrow. But uh, I'll say that they're trying hard to do what we're asking them to do. Like, they're doing a really good job trying. Now, we got to get better at that. A little bit of it is our style of play, to be honest with you. We play so fast, a lot of teams don't want to crash very many guys. A lot of teams will send four guys back to stop our break because we're playing so fast and downhill. So it makes it now getting late in the game when they're down 10, 11, 12. Now all of a sudden they're deciding to send maybe four to the glass instead of send everybody back because they got to make a run and that caused some problems. And then on our offensive end, a lot of teams don't want to run on us because they don't want to get into a up and down game. So 
we can go ahead and crash for because they ain't really trying to get out on us because that's our game getting up and down. So we, you know, at Buffalo last year, we were fourth in the country in pace of play on offense. So we've kind of found that to be the case. It helps with our rebounding just with kind of the style of play we have that way. And kind of along those lines, style of play is also leading to quite a bit of turnovers. You talked about that the other day. Another 22 today. Just I know there are some frustrations with some you know sloppiness or effort plays as you called it, but just how much is that kind of is that still a difficulty right now? Yeah, I mean it's a major problem. We can't turn the ball over to well, one out of every four possessions. Our I think our turnover percentage tonight was 25 percent. I think it was 23 percent going into the game. We it's gonna we, we can't be North Carolina doing this. So I mean, we put a huge point of emphasis on it. We tried to simplify the offense. Tried to you know let. So they don't have to think about running as many sets. We didn't run very many. Like, let's play real simple. You can think about making the correct reads. You know, let's get the ball in Kyra's hands more, Herb's hands more, some of the – but I almost think we, we put too much emphasis on some stuff and they didn't play as comfortable as we'd want them. So there's a fine line, and that's true. That's part of coaching. If you overemphasize something, sometimes it – backfires on you. You overemphasize free throw shooting, they start overthinking free throw shooting, they shoot worse. So maybe we overemphasize the turnovers and they thought about it too much. It's a little bit of self-fulfilling prophecy on some of that. So we're going to continue to work on it. We'll attack it different ways, but we definitely have to get it cleaned up. That's a major problem. We can't beat a team like North Carolina doing that. Uh, Coach, you talked about the turnovers. Can you walk us through how you cut those down and, and what you maybe change on the offensive end? So I um, showed them some numbers. I'm a math guy, math major, math teacher. I put up, we're, we're averaging, going into tonight, we were averaging 82.1 uh, possessions per game, I believe was the number. At Buffalo last year, we averaged 76.2. That was good for fourth in the country on Ken Palm offensive pace of play. I said, like, so we're averaging six more possessions a game this year than we did on the fourth fastest team in the country. And we're top five in the country in scoring each of the last two years at Buffalo. We can slow the game down to be more efficient on offense. I said, the goal is not to be the fastest team in the country. That's never been my goal. The goal is to be the most efficient team. The turnovers are killing our efficiency. I think scoring in the first seven seconds is big. I think you can break a defense down before it's set. That's why we want to play fast. But playing fast at the expense of turning the ball over, like that doesn't do us any good. We're better off slowing it down a little bit, maybe to get a few less possessions and just make every possession. Because our, our offensive rebounding numbers have been pretty good. They weren't very good tonight, but we, we did shoot the ball fairly well. So if we can just get a shot up, we're going to have a chance to score. So we kind of went through that, and then we kind of went through like, what is everybody great at? You know, are you a great shooter? Like, what's your strength on offense? So let's get the ball into the playmakers' hands. Let's let the finishers finish. Let's let the shooters shoot. So we talked about doing that. And that was kind of the game plan going in. They had different ways to try to keep the ball in Kyra's hands more often. And thought they, they their defense on Kyra was maybe as good as we've seen all year. I mean, the Hunter kid stayed – right down in front of him, didn't let him get by, kind of created problems because Kyra creates for us a lot. When he gets in the lane, it gets other guys shot. So Kyra having seven turnovers is an anomaly. He, an anomaly. He's not usually that bad turning the ball over, but they, they did a pretty good job on him. Coach, real quickly, I know Galen went to the locker room and came back. What was uh, what was was there what some what was wrong with uh, Gabe? What what was what he said concussions before he got hit in the head. They just wanted oh. to make sure it was just a uh, headache and not a concussion. And then quickly, uh, the, I thought the the play Petty made in the backcourt to almost get a steal and slow them down late was huge. And then the play uh, that Herbert made on the block. Talk about those two uh, plays. The, I know the Petty one you're talking about. Which which one are you talking about, uh, Herb, on the block? Uh, on the on the block three. Oh, you know, block yeah. oh block. Yeah. I thought you meant on the block. They yes, down in the post. Yeah, yeah. No, P Petty's play was big. I thought he was going to come up with it, and you know, I'm going to tell him next time. Maybe maybe just try to call a timeout quick. Uh, you know, instead, but but it was big because they had been pushing the ball off the floor, getting into our defense, you know, scoring. Like the one, we score, big bucket. They go down and hit a three immediately. Like we just, our guys got to quit celebrating and get back. Like celebrate after the whistle blows. 
like when it's still live, we got to get back. So that was a little disappointing. But then when Herb got the block, we had said we were going to switch, you know, we kind of switched the matchups up a little bit. I thought Herb made an unbelievable play on that. They get, you know, the kid had been killing us and continued to. But I, th I think Herb's length, athleticism, and just defensive instincts are elite. And that was big. I mean, they – we needed that stop. They were on a run at the time. We really needed that stop. That guy was a big stop right there. <laughs> uh, Friday night you had 33 – or Rhode Island had 33 points off of turnovers. Uh, tonight, uh, Furman only had 14. How do you see the team improve there? Well, we had the same number of turnovers, so – we told them we we whether we turn it over, miss our first eleven threes like we did against Rhode Island, whatever we do on offense, doesn't matter. You got to sprint, sprint your tail back and get a stop on D. I thought we let some turnovers drop your head, jog back on D. They score on us, and that opened that seventeen point lead up. It's some immaturity. It's learning the new system with some of the turnovers, but I thought our mindset tonight was 100% better. We just sprinted back and got to stop after the turnover instead of hanging our head. So we're going to turn the ball over. Hopefully it's more like 10 or 12 instead of 22. But when we do, we just got to get back and get stopped. So I thought we were 100% better on, on that stuff. Our, our mindset was a lot better. That, that, that was significantly improved from the Rhode Island game. Um, away from the game, just for a second, Coach. Um, you got your paperwork back on your signee today, um, Ambrose Hilton, and just wondered if you could sort of fill us in on what, what you've got there and what you do recruiting-wise going forward. Yeah, no, great question. So we got the NLI back on Keon. He's 6'8". Really, and, and, you know, when we were in Buffalo, we're right across the border there from Toronto, not that far. So we, we kept an eye on a lot of those Canadian kids. His improvement over the last year and a half to two years – is as good an improvement as anybody I saw in the top 100. So we want guys that want to be in the gym, big-time gym rats. He was He's always been an athlete, could run. I mean, we need athletes to get up and down playing as fast as we do. But he wasn't a great shooter two years ago. We went, as we watched him over the last few months here, summer, fall, he's turned himself into a, a really good shooter. So he's 6'8", significantly improving his skill level, athletic, can play multiple positions. What we want, and he's a great kid on top of it. So they get, now we only have one senior, so essentially there's one scholarship. We all know in today's game there's going to be more than that. We're not done recruiting in 2020. You know, we were going after multiple guys, missed on a few, really happy with Keon. He was put a lot of, a lot of emphasis on him. There's a few more Canadians that – Keon knows and as well, and you know, kind of with recruiting now, they some guys team up, going team. We're we're gonna go after some more guys in 2020. I mean, ideally, we get you know an athletic big to kind of complement what we've got, and then ideally we get another combo guard, point guard maybe. You know, anticipating that Kyra may be good enough to go to the draft after the year, or even if not at I, you know the way we play is spread out. Our we are we can play four guards. We're playing four guards right now. I mean, sometimes we got. I mean, I kind of count Herb a guard. He's basically our backup point guard right now. You put Herb, Kyra, John Petty, Shackelford. Those four play together all the time. So if we could get another guard that could pass, dribble, and shoot, do all three at a high level, that would be ideal. Because the way we play, we need skilled players. So that, that's what we're going to be looking for. We've gone really all in especially uh, Petway and Charlie on the 2021 class, you know, because the 2020 recruits were kind of, Brian kind of had those. It's just the way it shook out. So we're that's a huge class for us. So we're spending a lot of time on 2021s, but we're not done in 2020. We'd, we'd like to sign a couple guys late, one or two late, depending on what happens with the roster and everything. Yeah, and that's another thing, too, with the way it is now. Some of your best players that you may get for next year may not be in the high school ranks. They may be a kid that's playing somewhere else, puts his name in a portal, grad transfers, 
coach gets fired, hey, whatever it is. I mean, you look across the board. I'm the preseason player of the year in the SEC. So, you know, a kid that that grad transferred. So that that's definitely out there. It's hard to predict that stuff this early. So we're we're, I mean, we're fine. We got one senior signed one to replace him. As we figure this year out, who's maybe going to leave? Who you know can Kyra go? All that we'll figure that out. Grad transfers, Juke. We we were really successful with junior college kids at Buffalo. We got our eye on some of them. Transfer JUCO kids late. We'll, we'll we're we're going to be all over it, and you know. But in the meantime, we're going to spend a lot of time on 2021s because we at this level, you find like we got on all those 2020 kids late when we got the job in March. A lot of those have been re- recruited by other programs for a long time. So we got to get in early with the 2021 kids. So. That's that's we're focusing on both right now. Thank you.